did it zero to $12,000 a month while traveling the world. Good work on escaping a job, and then escaping freelancing by growing your MRR. I love the advice to just get moving. You can't steer a parked car, James Shomkadayam. Good work. I get emails in my inbox daily of people offering SEO services. My question for you would be How do you set yourself apart? Are you using name tags? Or do you personally email each prospect? I'm guessing a batch email to a list is the most common way companies operate in these situations. Thanks for the write up and congrats on your success. Yeah I don't bother with cold outreach like spamming hundreds of emails. I would say I get half my clients from referrals and the other half from content I've produced. I set myself apart by ignoring my competition and focusing 100% on my prospect. If I think I can get the, the results they want I use past success to prove to them I can do it. Then I use creative deal making to lower their risk and make it a no brainer decision. Hi, I'm new to the forum. Just joined because your post is inspiring. Thank you for sharing. I like this review funnels thing you mentioned. Where can I find how to do something like that? Do you integrate some kind of special tool or form for this? Do you host the page yourself and then get paid monthly while your client uses it? Thanks in advance, and congrats on the business. Hey Mori. I'm glad you joined TFF. It's a good place to surround one's self with like-minded people. The review funnel thing started with. You can purchase their service for three websites for 90 or more. There are tons of these services these days so you can probably do a search for review management and find a bunch. Some of my clients didn't need the full reputation management service so I made a very similar thing with WordPress. Be aware that review gating is against Google terms of service so don't try to ward off bad reviews. A neat thing about the review funnel is you give it its own URL and make it no index so the only people that go there are the ones sent there. Notable. Rep plus. Stories like this remind me why I write, and why I spend so much time here. Thanks for sharing, upgraded to gold, not because you're making millions, but because you found your freedom and control. Could you post a link to Rob's course? I'm new to this forum and don't know where to find it. Also would it be possible to learn web design like you did while also being a full-time college student? I think this is the one. Fox also created some excellent threads edit, thank you for sharing your story. It was inspiring. All nice and done but the point is the internet is flooded with freelancers. So if you have very special connections and found a niche market, gratulations. Because what I have seen is, it's not easy even for advanced programmers. The second thing is most campaigners already have from the beginning website masters. So the entry bear is also hard. Dot, but I'm open for suggestions. Awesome. Plus rep where's your home base now? If we cross paths, I'd love to buy you a beer. You have mindset problem. Freelancer basically means an individual working for different companies at different times rather than being permanently employed by one company. The concept is simple if an employer can afford to hire you, that means that he's making money off of you. You might as well just work for yourself and get paid what you're actually worth in the market. What you're worth is based on how well you market yourself, and the value that you provide. What are you good at? How can you make someone else money, or their life better? Those are the questions you need to answer. Then you need to figure out how much the market values those skills, and how you can go out and find people to pay you for those skills. Good luck man. This is an excellent write-up. Thank you for this. Number 4, being a good person, speaks to me especially. It's not talked about a lot, but it's very important. Great journey my friend.
Thanks for sharing it here. It surprises me though, that the web design industry isn't saturated yet. Anyways, you seem to have found a way through it. Also, a key thing for an entrepreneur to have, I guess. Web design is not saturated. More people are searching online than ever before, and most websites are shocking on desktops, never mind mobile. Even if everyone's sites were good, then how would business owners set themselves apart from the herd? By raising the bar constantly. Mind your speech patterns. They stop you seeing solutions and opportunities. Thanks for the write-up. No rep to transfer but the thought is there. Would love to see the rest of your reading list. Totally inspiring. So awesome. Congrats on your progress. I'm fairly new to web design or digital marketing agency business, and I love learning about the different ways people like you are helping clients. Looking forward to hearing more. All the best. What an inspiring story. Way to go. Rep plus exclamation mark I'm particularly intrigued by the feedback funnels. That is super powerful. What a great way to provide value and collect MRR at the same time. Hi Chuck, thanks for the write-up of your story. Amazing read. I'm also a member of the Fox Pro Sales Group, maybe you recognize me Christopher Koch. Anyway, I got one question. What do you think are the key factors that made you succeed so far? compared to many other members in the group or in general as a web designer, or online marketer if you will. Thanks and regards from Germany. It's definitely possible and Rob's course is a great place to start. The community built around the course is what will help you stick with it and not get discouraged. From what I've seen and experienced, you can make money doing anything as long as you stick with it long enough. That means if you try web design and it doesn't take off right away. Know that that is normal. Good luck. I'll look for a link to Rob's course later today. I take it you haven't tried? I used to think this kind of stuff too but the better I get, the less competition I see. Indeed there are a ton of freelancers but the majority of them are lacking sales skills which leaves them hovering around Upwork competing for the same low paying jobs. When I talk to prospective customers I am always the only one that takes the time to learn about them and their company to identify their specific problems so I can present solutions to those problems. I show them solutions to their problems. Everyone else shows them a website with 8 pages. The market being flooded doesn't really mean anything. Thanks. I'm based in Spokane, Washington but I travel all over. The biggest difference I've noticed between myself and others around me is perseverance. Most people seem to give up so easily while I refuse to give up. It's not just business. When I go into our storage room to find a ball pump and don't find it right away, it's not uncommon for me to have every single box out looking for it. Over the last few years I've developed a different idea of challenge. It empowers me now. When something doesn't work out right away I get excited. It's weird, honestly. I get a burst of energy to find that ball pump even though I don't even need it that bad. If I don't end up finding it and do decide to give up eventually, I feel a terrible despair. That's probably it. When I look back over the last two years I can count on one hand the things I gave up on before I succeeded. It's a magical thing too, because once you realize that you have this power, your confidence goes through the roof. When you know without a doubt that you are the type of person that will find a way to the finish line no matter what, you know that you will eventually get what you want. Then the matter becomes really figuring out what you want. But that's a whole different topic. This is hilarious as I am based in Spokane as well, so crazy to see the local hometown mentioned on the forum LOL. Whereabouts are you? I read Fox's thread a while back as well. I am out in the valley and would love to go out for a beer. I had to post because you never see anyone from Spokane. Cheers mate and thank you for the thread, killer read. Wow, I'm honored. Thank you MJ. Thank you for starting and maintaining this community. I can't imagine the ripples you've started and how big of an impact you've had through the lives you've changed. 
it's so cool that I can connect with the person who sparked the fire for me in the beginning. I'm actually in Kta, but I bounce back and forth. I'm here for two days then I head to the other side of the world for three months. Send me a PM or find me on FB and let's grab a beer before I go. Awesome job. Thank you for your testimony. I definitely resonated with what you said in the beginning of your post. Normal pattern for me where I would alternate back and forth between extremely unproductive behavior and the highly motivated obsessive though short-lived pursuit of something more. It got to the point where I said enough is enough. I'm a year into my e-com business and I've had many success and failures during that time, but I keep moving forward and working toward my first goal of hitting five figures or more. This will allow me to finally quit my job and start living life on my own terms and beyond. I look forward to reading more great things from you. Did you develop this mentality through conscious effort, or did it come naturally? For most people, as you said, the thought process I guess for doing something hard is probably like that colon one. Okay, let's get the ball pump too. What? It's not where it's supposed to be? Okay. Take a look around. Nope, can't find it. Dot three. Ask someone else if he or she saw it four. If no, greater than give up and play Game Boy can you describe yours? Also, you mentioned the Tony Robbins books, did you do all the exercises he mentions? If yes, did those had an effect on you? Thank you, my friend, for this story. Encouraging, simple and right to the point. I have a brother that is very skilled and very unsuccessful at web development. I sent him the link to this thread. Great work on all your successes. First of all, back when I read I decided then and there I was going to make it happen for myself. Up until that point I guess I just wasn't sure if it was something I could do. Once I learned that other people just like me were changing their lives, I knew there was a way I could it as well. The thing about mindset is that it's a feedback loop. I look at it like this colon one. I decide to start persevering on everything in my life. Two. I make my way through various situations that require me to try over and over to succeed at something before I get the results I'm after. This is a new pattern of behavior for me so I have to make a conscious effort to do it. Dot 3. My subconscious mind and nervous system get used to this mode of action slowly over time. Dot 4. The decision sinks in even deeper and becomes something I do unconsciously. It becomes who I am. Dot I think this is true in every part of life. This is why knowing is never as good as doing. Knowing something consciously is easy and only uses a small part of your brain. Doing something allows the rest of your brain and body to know it as well. The way I made sure I would follow through is I designed my living situation so that I had no choice. At least I felt like I had no choice. This was key. As far as Tony Robbins material, I didn't do all the exercises the first time through. Just reading was enough for me to have a thousand epiphanies about life based on my past experiences and current interactions with others. I've read through Awaken the Giant within twice and did the exercises in my head the second time. I also listened to Personal Power 2 while driving to and from work and did the exercises in my head. A little hack I did was using my Apple Watch to set myself reminders to consider the pleasure and pain of a decision I made that day. After a month or so of practicing thinking of things in terms of pleasure or pain the material really started to sink in and all my interactions with others improved. I will go over this material once a year for the rest of my life as I think it's so critical to understand how and why do things on an individual basis. It helps a ton with copywriting and sales as well. Understanding why people do what they do. Simply understanding the fundamentals of human behavior is incredibly effective for business. Think about it, business is all about trading humans' value for money. Understanding what they find valuable, why they find it valuable, and how they decide to buy it gets you a really long ways towards having a successful company. Besides business, 
Tony Robbins material has helped me understand my friends and family better which has given me a lot more empathy for them than I used to feel. Someone asked me in a private message how I recommend they get better at sales. I thought the response would be useful to others in here so I'm posting it publicly. Hey! Thanks for taking the time to read my post. I'm glad you got something out of it. As far as sales goes, it's actually really easy. It starts with truly understanding people and why they do what they do. I learned a lot of this from Tony Robbins. The way I make sales is I talk to my prospect and do my absolute best to understand them, their business, what they are trying to do, what is holding them back, and what they would like from me. A lot of it is just asking a ton of questions until there's nothing left hiding. Once I have a clear understanding of the entire situation, I know whether or not I can help them. If I can, I make a plan and present it to them while making sure they know that what I'm really selling is my commitment to solving their problem. If I can't help them then I try to point them to someone who can. Sales really starts with a mindset of wanting to help as much as possible. Forget about yourself completely and focus 100% on helping them achieve their goals. The cool thing is that if you can get good at helping other achieve their goals, money will magically find its way to your bank account. There are lots of strategies, tips, and tricks when it comes to sales, but starting from a place of wanting to make your customers' lives better is the best way to go. Epic story, M. Jelly. Awesome and congratulations on your success. Great story and very inspiring. Can you say a little more about getting business from the content tube of produced? Where are you posting this stuff? How do you decide what to focus on? I love the idea of providing value first via content but don't want it to get lost. While I build websites for clients I also build them for myself. Most of them are simply a handful of articles about a certain topic that I have expertise in. I use a tool called Ahrefs to research what websites are out there, what keywords they rank for, and roughly how much traffic those keywords generate. This way, if there's a topic I want to write about, I can do research and know how to make my content get found by more people. The techniques I use branch into many different disciplines such as SEO, content marketing, email marketing, as well as web design. Once the content is written, I promote it through various channels like Facebook, Medium, etc. A good way to start is to write things about your local area. Local topics are typically easy to rank for because they are more niched. I understand where you are coming from when you say but I don't want it to get lost but you have to get rid of that mindset. This tiny sentence turned an actionable idea into a non-actionable idea. If you want to start making content, do it. Focus on helping people and you seriously can't go wrong. Once you have 20 pieces of valuable content I can almost guarantee it will be found by someone. Even if it doesn't, you've already taken care of the hard part. Attracting eyeballs is easy when you have something of value. Awesome. How do you make connection while living at new place? Sent from my iPhone using Taper Talk. Awesome. How do you make connection while living at new place? Sent from my iPhone using Taper Talk. All sorts of ways. Facebook groups was a big one. There's a Forgners in X group in every city I visited. Excellent. Thanks for showing us what's possible. I'm only at the beginning of my web development freelancing business but I look forward to making enough money to do just that and have back my freedom and location independence. If I can do it, anyone can. You will alternate between really excited and unsure whether it's the right path. It's normal. When you are taking lots of action and things don't seem to get happening, that's a good sign. It means you're getting close to a breakthrough. If you can learn to recognize these feelings and use them to give you a boost of energy and effort, you will make it. Don't give up before you succeed. If you want to give up, do it after. Cheers. This thread has seriously helped me a ton and I thank you greatly for it.
Would you say most of your clients are localish to your area or is the bulk of your clients not remotely close to the PNW? Globalization is so crazy nowadays and it is seriously awesome as well as inspiring that you can travel the world with web design and still help out specific clients. 80% of my clients are not in my local area. In fact, I would say half of them I've never even spoken to face to face. It is incredible when you think about. I'm glad you got something from my story. Cheers. Your story was really an inspiration to me man because I feel as if I'm in the same situation. I already have an online store which has done over six figures but is rather seasonal so most of the months, I'm just sort of floating by. Because of the marketing skills I gained from the store, I have a YouTube channel and also do mentoring for many people. In fact, I sell a course as well. But my main goal had been an agency or something scalable which can be scaled all the time. I'm not sure which direction to head in or what to do. First of all, thank you for sharing your story here. Stories like these really motivate me a lot and give me much hope. Haha, <laughs> so true. You made that move quite fast, which speaks to your success. That is just effing great. Found this especially appealing today. Last, good luck and fortune on your further journey and scaling your business. Wow, you have a lot going on. It sounds like you're on the right track. Have you determined that what you're doing now isn't going to work? It sounds like you might be in a period of little feedback which is always a challenge to get through. I would say double down on what you're doing and try to make it work. You might be close to pay debt. Agency business is good but it isn't as scalable as YouTube or selling courses. That's the thing, I'm actually a college student but I put in almost all of my free time into turning this store into a brand. That means all of my packages get shipped with the store's logo and I also have a blog. It's more self-doubt all the time which causes me to think whether I'm in the right direction or not. And my course doesn't sell as much right now mainly because I rely on traffic from my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is at 3.3k subs and growing fast. At this point, would you recommend I go all in on what I'm already doing or try to create more opportunities? It's really hard juggling school and all this so just like you, I was planning on leaving school for a year meaning take a gap year. However, I'm not sure where I would be at the end of this gap year. Great post. I loved reading your progress thread. You are a very captivating writer. Are you building them from scratch programming or coding or using a platform X. Shopify and helping clients setting them up that way? I have a Shopify store and when people tell me how good my website looks and that I must know a lot about computers I feel guilty that it is a template from Shopify. But then I think about walking into local businesses and helping them get leads by upgrading their websites, social media pages and overall marketing. Do you target companies that have low quality websites and do not seem to be too internet safe? Thanks. This quote has described me up to this point. Thank you good luck Chuck for your post. Inspirational brother. It's hard for me to give super specific advice without knowing the details but I can say with confidence that building on current and past success is easier than starting over. It's easy to get shiny object syndrome when you see others killing it in different areas, but you have to take that into account. You say you make sales for your course through YouTube and your following is growing fast. So, why not focus on that? Have you created your own progress thread for these projects? I'm sure if you gave everyone more details you would get good feedback. Let me ask you, if you could bake a delicious, great looking cake with any oven, then how important is the oven? I use WordPress to build 99% of the websites I build. I use page builders which make it easier. My clients don't hire me for the tools, they hire me for the results I get. What goes on the website and how it fits in with their sales system, business, and customers' experience is where I add the real value. Business is all super simple. People will pay for what they want or need, so if you can deliver that, 
they will pay you for it. People don't come to me for websites. They come to me to help them sell more product and acquire more customers. Yes, I'm currently already focusing on that and am posting on a consistent basis. The only issue is, I also wanted some extra sources of income to be on the safe side. But you think working on my personal brand and trying to grow that should be my number one priority? I was also planning on opening more websites to sell other things but not sure whether it's worth spreading out my focus or not. Helping others and providing value should be your number one priority. You also need to be monogamous with your business. I like to quote Ron Swanson here. But how do I know it's the business which will take me to the next level and not something I'm just wasting time on? I mean, it has shown positive results but it's not consistent. So much self-doubt. You're gonna have to change your mindset before you hope to succeed. No one here can tell you if your business will succeed or fail, but if you don't try then you are guaranteed to fail. Incredible story and I find myself in your position. The most inspirational thing I read in 2019 so far. Thank you for sharing this epic story. Your mindset is very similar to me, and I am also a huge fan of Tony Robbins. Awaken the Giant Within is the first self-help book I read and it literally has blown my mind. I had a question about sales. How do you know if you actually can't help a client or you think in that way because you are afraid of something or avoiding pushing your comfort zone? How you can be sure you will get real results to your client, and you are a great fit for the job? Amazing story. The part where you questioned yourself after having played 10 hours of video games did it for me, along with making moves and actually deciding to be a better person. I saw a lot of myself there, except the making moves part lol. I'm really interested in doing business online and providing a service for people. Something that can help another person with a project or something they care about. I enjoy helping people and want to take an online approach. Are there any resources you can link to that can be utilized by beginners or entry-level computer users to learn web design or marketing skills? Thank you again for the inspiring story. I base decisions off two main things. 1. Past results Have I done this before? Based on past results can I expect to get the desired results? A lot of marketing and sales is numbers and probabilities. With a big enough pool of prospective customers I can be reasonably certain to make some sales. Two. My time constraints. Like it or not, time is always a factor in this type of service, whether it's mine or someone else's that I'm paying for. When I sell a project the main thing I'm selling is my commitment to produce the results. This is where the confidence comes from. I am certain that I can do it, it's just a matter of how long it will take. I weigh time with other more subjective factors like do I like this client? Do I like this project? Do I like this market? Is this a bite I can chew? In the beginning I asked questions just like this. How do you know if you can get results? You can know with your conscious brain by learning how others do it. You can learn with your subconscious brain and nervous system by doing it. In the end, you never know for sure. You just get more confident in your ability. If you can manage to commit 100% to it, then you know you'll either make it happen or die. If you die, then who cares? As a newbie getting started or getting used to how this forum's interface or search works. Thank you for doing the legwork. These are great resources. My suggestion is to split your time in half between doing and studying. My approach to trying new things had changed a lot. I start by writing down what I know now. I make a list of questions as thorough as I can and I answer them with my present knowledge. Let's use surfing as an example since I'll be trying that soon. I have never surfed or taken a lesson. I've spent a lot of time thinking about it though and applying my knowledge of snowboarding to what I expect surfing to be like. Next, I'll rent a board and go give it a try. I'll probably struggle at some parts and be pretty good at others, then I'll go get a lesson.
by this time I'll already have some working knowledge and experience to use as a foundation for learning the details. I'll likely have some questions and be able to get more out of the lesson than I would have with zero foundation. This is what I recommend for people starting something like web design. First, write down the steps you'll take the best you can with your current knowledge. Then, go find a YouTube video and follow along in buying a domain, setting up hosting, and start in on building the site. See how far you can get. It will be a struggle and that's good. If you reach points you can't progress past, use Google to help. You can literally Google your way to building anything online. Once you have a website live and you have produced something, then go find a course. You will have a solid foundation of experience to build your knowledge on. Without the foundation the knowledge will have no leg to stand on. I've learned to use courses as a boost rather than a foundation. I'm sure we'll disagree, but one thing we can all agree on is that it's really easy to get into the trap of taking tons of course and feeling like you're taking action even though you aren't actually producing anything. Producing versus consuming 101. Excellent thread. Reps transferred? Woza. That's good stuff. Thanks for dropping this valuable info. Since I started this thread I've been trying to think of more valuable experiences I could share that would be helpful to you guys and gals. One thing I think we all struggle with, especially in the beginning is getting overwhelmed. In the beginning of 2018 I was constantly feeling like I was barely keeping my head above water. My mind was plagued with doubts of whether or not I was making the progress I desired. The solution I found helped a lot. It's possible that the method I'm about to share is one of the main reasons I've had the success I've had. It's called the power list method. The power list is a concept made popular by a man named Andy Frizzilla. He'd podcast them. Shio podcast was a great source of inspiration and motivation for me during this time. The power list concept is simple. You start every day by writing down the five more important things you have to do that day. No matter what happens, you make sure those five things get done. Even if you don't do everything on your agenda, if you do this five things, you win the day. What isn't immediately apparent about this productivity method is how effective it is at negating feelings of being overwhelmed. The way I see it, even if I can't get to everything I want to do, or even remember everything, as long as I do those five things every day. I am headed in the right direction. Frizzler did a podcast about this. I think it was called Trust Your Instruments. He likened being an entrepreneur to being an airplane pilot flying through fog. You can't see where you're going, but you have instruments that guide you one mile at a time and you have to trust they will take you in the right direction. The power list is my instrument and I know that as long as I keep doing those five things each day. I will get to where I want to go. It's inevitable. This takes a lot of the pressure off and lets me relax and enjoy the process. A tool I use for my power list is called Trello. I create a card for each day and have 30 plus days of cards made ahead of time. I use these cards as my schedule. If I have an appointment or a sales call coming up, it goes on my power list. If I'm working on a project, I break it into pieces and put those pieces on various power lists. I start each day by opening up Trello and looking to see what I have on the list. I complete everything on there and I move the card to the 2019 folder. I don't worry about what's on the list tomorrow or next week. I don't dwell on the mountain ahead of me. I just focus on what is on my plate today. This breaks the gigantic process of building a multi million dollar lifestyle into tiny bite sized chunks that are easy to swallow. This keeps me from getting overwhelmed and even allows me to enjoy the process. I can look in the 2018 Trello board and see 365 cards with completed power lists. The life I'm enjoying today is a result of the work that is displayed on those cards. With this method literally anyone can do anything one power list at a time. Thank you Andy Frizzler for this awesome podcast. If you want to learn more about this concept you can listen to the episode here.
If you are feeling overwhelmed about the mountain of work you see in front of you, try the powerless method. I promise it will change your life. This year after every quarter I take a few days off and review what has happened so far. I set new goals, plan the next three months and ask myself what can I optimize about my business. I see it like a software version, so after this quarter, my business is v1.1 Today was the day where I tried to find a way to keep track of the most important stuff that needs to get done every day. Just now, I see this wonderful post from you with this neat technique. I'm by no means a religious person, but I think that at some point, the universe is trying to tell you something. Nice post Chuck, please 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 share more of those valuable experiences you had so far in your journey. What is your sales process and sales turnaround look like? Do you do the majority of your sales accessing your network or is it cold email or phone call? What is your success rate if you were to approach 100 businesses? I find most people that get into digital marketing are very secretive no idea why about their success or failures. Sales is a numbers game, in the beginning I did a bit of networking. Networking events were not very lucrative as they were mostly made up of insurance salesmen and mortgage brokers. The kind of networking that worked for me was reaching out to other web designers and marketers. The fact is, people don't have a ton of friends, so if you call them up and offer to buy them lunch, they usually say yes. With a handful of people referring me, work about 50% of new projects come from this channel. The other 50% comes through my website. I don't do any cold outbound, but I would if I had no clients. Sales process is simple. 1. First touch to schedule a longer call. 2. Second touch I'll try and get as many details as I can about their challenges and goals. 3. Third touch is about reviewing their pain points and presenting a solution to their problems while informing them about what I discovered while researching their business or market. I always try and close them on the phone at this point before I send any kind of proposal. 4. When they soft close on the phone I'll send a proposal or invoice. If they don't immediately pay then I follow up weekly until they pay or ask me to stop. Sometimes I have to follow up 10 plus times. People are weird and they have their own reasons for not responding right away. Another good percent of work comes from past clients and their referrals. As for secrets, there's no need to be secretive. There are a bajillion businesses out there that need marketing and a shortage of good people to give it to them. People who think the market is saturated are making excuses why they don't have success in the industry. Chuck. I just saw this. This is awesome. Congratulations. It seems like yesterday you were showing me your first couple of one-page sites when we met up for coffee at the New Seasons in Onco Station. Remember that place? Your story is a great lesson on how quickly things can change if you manage your mindset and take massive action. What an amazing story. I've felt like that so many times, I want to do a billion things but end up not doing any. Thanks for sharing your journey and if you ever come back to Mexico City, let me know, I'll gladly invite you some rounds of beers, or I can show you around the city. Hi, thank you for sharing. Some questions if you don't mind answering colon 1. You state that you are now working part time hours for your 12k or more revenue? Would you say you are on the low end or high end of the part-time range in terms of hours worked at present for example 5 hours per week versus 25. Do you have any plans to make this 100% passive or do you see yourself as always doing part-time hours here and there indefinitely? Question mark two. What were some of the biggest and most difficult obstacles you encountered during this process? From your post you made it really sound like a walk in the park for example you traveled the world whilst doing this. Do you see yourself as relatively talented at learning new things? You seemed to have been able to distinguish yourself as a website creator in the website market after only two years, when many website creators probably have trained for many more years than that yet probably still make much less income than you do. 
immersion. I've always pictured this in an abstract kind of way. I call it the hello world model which I've written about. Basically when I approach creating content I start by writing or speaking audio record an idea. This gets archived and published in one way or another onto the internet. Someone will find it. And so I rinse and repeat, each time refining the strategies behind it. But ultimately, it's about having something valuable to say to your audience. Like you said the hard part is done. Yup. Thanks man. Long time no see. We should catch up sometime. Would love to hear how you're getting along. I recently met someone who lives off an affiliate website and uses the funds to not only pay his bills but travel the world. He works only a few hours a week and has for the last few years. His strategy? Post and pray. He has posted around 1000 articles with no other strategy than sheer numbers and it worked. Happy to answer these questions. You caught me as I just woke up with a cup of coffee in my hand so prepare for some long-winded answers. 1. High end or low end for part time work. It varies. I say part time but to be honest I don't really know how much time I spend working. To be clear, when I saw work part time I mean work part time on paying projects. The amount of time I've spent reading, taking courses, practicing on my own projects, etc. would account for much more than full time hours if I added them all up. It's been an obsession for me. Did any of this feel like work to me? No, because not only do I enjoy learning, but the idea of taking action now that will pay off later is extremely motivating to me. So, when I say I work part time, I mean I work part time on acquiring and delivering client projects. The rest of my time is spent working on myself and my own projects. Without the second part, the first part wouldn't be paying so much after two years. To quantify it with a guess, I would say I've spent about 15 focused hours per week average on client projects over the last two years. The way I work is not focused so I quantify this by thinking if the client was standing there watching me how much time would I bill them for. It's not uncommon for me to be doing research on how to do something while I'm doing it. Learning on the fly.1.2 Do I plan to make it 100% passive? No. This model can't be 100% passive. Even if I hire someone to manage it all for me, I have to manage them so it will take some of my time. The MRR part of this model suffers from client turnover meaning some clients drop out after a while so in order to keep the income the same I have to be making constant sales. My plan for the marketing agency is to keep it going organically as I focus my power on things that can be either more passive or bring in exponentially more income. If I created something that was 100% passive I might sell it for a lot of dollar. I'm a busy body and the idea of 100% passive doesn't seem all that sustainable to me. The world changes as do the markets in it so nothing lasts forever.2. Most difficult obstacles. To put it in a ratio I attribute my success 3 to 1 mindset to skill set. In the beginning I was terrified of selling because I was unsure of what I could deliver. I learned to rely on my commitment rather than track record because I didn't have one. I, I told myself, if I get this job I will not sleep until I get the results I promised. After a few projects, I realized this was a good way to go about things because it allowed me to take on projects I was underqualified for while being confident enough to sell them. Don't get me wrong, it was still difficult to sell because I still lacked confidence. I would find a million reasons why not to get on the phone. This resulted in me taking lots of courses. Action faking as my skill set grew from the courses and practice, my confidence did as well and I was better able to take bigger bites and be more ambitious with my endeavors. When I look back now I can see it is mostly mindset and self-esteem that separates me now from me then. I have experience but I'm not doing things a whole lot different than I was then. If I could have been more courageous a year ago I could have probably been making a lot more money then. On the same token, 
I could probably be making 5x what I am now just by having a more advanced mindset, this is the way it goes. We see things from the perspective of the place we're at. That's why I spend most of my free time now working on understanding mindset and how to shape that. The difference between someone with 100k in the bank and 100b in the bank is the way they view themselves and the world. Another huge obstacle for me was comfort. When I'm comfortable I get lazy. Traveling helped get me out of my comfort zone where I perform much better and with more vigor and endurance. Being in a new place where nobody speaks the language or gives two shits about me made me feel like I had to work a lot harder to survive. This made me work a lot harder. This is why Mexico City will always hold a special place in my heart, it's where I found my inner strength and courage and built the momentum that carried me to where I am today. 2.2 am I good at picking up new skills? Yes. I've always been really good at developing new skills. It's a strength of mine. As a kid I was always better than my peers at skateboarding, baseball, subjects in school that I almost flunked out of high school. On the flip side my weakness is that I have a hard time sticking with things once I break past the initial difficulty phase. I just get bored. Maybe that's why I run a marketing agency with no niche. I like to learn new things then move on. Discipline is a challenge for me. As for why I can charge more than other web developers and designers. That's just because I choose to. Pricing in this industry is incredible arbitrary. In the Fox Web School Gang we focus on value pricing because it allows us to create win-win deals with every client. If I can make someone 100k with a new website then charging 20k is still a no-brainer for everyone. Do I get a knot in my stomach when I throw out a high price stack? Yeah? When they say yes immediately I wonder if I could have asked for more. I get about 50% of the projects I propose so I think that's ok. A lot of web developers and coders don't understand why they can't make as much. A lot of them are self-proclaimed bad at dealing with people. That's just a mindset plus skill set thing. It takes practice like everything else as well as the courage to suck at it for a while. My message to anyone in this industry that wants to make more is this, work on your people skills and sell your own projects. You can ask for as much as you want. If you have a full-time job then ask for a high amount that you feel like you probably won't get. An amount that if you did get it, you could quit your job and start freelance full-time. After enough sales calls you will eventually find someone willing to pay this. It truly is a numbers game. Hi read you story, pretty amazing wanted to ask, how did you manage to get clients while traveling? Did you find that not being able to meet them made it harder for you to sell it? Thanks in advance. You would probably enjoy Peek by Anders Ericsson, he is a professor of psychology who specializes in the study of expertise. You seldom improve much without giving the task your full attention. What works? What doesn't? And why? But if math works the same way as chess, then we have lost a whole collection of children who might eventually have become quite accomplished in these areas if only they hadn't been labeled as no good at math in the very beginning. The regular cycle of try, fail, get feedback, try again, and so on is how the students will build their mental representations. I would argue that we humans are most human when we're improving ourselves. We, unlike any other animal, can consciously change ourselves, to improve ourselves, in ways we choose. This distinguishes us from every other species alive today and, as far as we know, from every other species that has ever lived. You don't build mental representations by thinking about something, you build them by trying to do something, failing, revising, and trying again, over and over. When you're done, not only have you developed an effective mental representation for the skill you were developing, but you have also absorbed a great deal of information connected with that skill. I get it. People want to believe that there is magic in life, that not everything has to abide by the staid, boring rules of the real world. 
And what could be more magical than being born with some incredible ability that doesn't require hard work or discipline to develop? There is an entire comic book industry built on that premise, that sometimes something magical happens, and you suddenly acquire incredible powers. Unbeknownst to you, you were actually born on the planet Krypton and you can fly. Or you were bitten by a radioactive spider and you can cling to walls. Or you were exposed to cosmic radiation and now you can become invisible. But my decades of research in the area of expertise have convinced me that there is no magic. By examining the case of someone with exceptional abilities through the lens of those two earlier questions I posed. What is the talent? What practice led to the talent? You can pull back the curtain and find what is really going on. Make It Stick is also a great book on the science of learning. It goes through why most study strategies yield mediocre results and how you can learn more effectively. It was written by a novelist and two psychology researchers a storyteller and two scientists, so ideas that have merit and are well written. Learning is stronger when it matters, when the abstract is made concrete and personal. In other words, the elements that shape your intellectual abilities lie to a surprising extent within your own control. Mastering the lecture or the text is not the same as mastering the ideas behind them. Trying to solve a problem before being taught the solution leads to better learning, even when errors are made in the attempt. The good news is that we now know of simple and practical strategies that anybody can use, at any point in life, to learn better and remember longer, various forms of retrieval practice, such as low-stakes quizzing and self-testing, spacing out practice, interleaving the practice of different but related topics or skills, trying to solve a problem before being taught the solution, distilling the underlying principles or rules that differentiate types of problems, and so on. Had he used the set of key concepts in the back of each chapter to test himself? Could he look at a concept like condition stimulus, define it, and use it in a paragraph? While he was reading, had he thought of converting the main points of the text into a series of questions and then later tried to answer them while he was studying? Had he at least rephrased the main ideas in his own words as he read? Had he tried to relate them to what he already knew? Had he looked for examples outside the text? The answer was no in every case. Many people believe that their intellectual ability is hardwired from birth, and that failure to meet a learning challenge is an indictment of their native ability. But every time you learn something new, you change the brain, the residue of your experiences is stored. It's true that we start life with the gift of our genes, but it's also true that we become capable through the learning and development of mental models that enable us to reason, solve, and create. In other words, the elements that shape your intellectual abilities lie to a surprising extent within your own control. Understanding that this is so enables you to see failure as a badge of effort and a source of useful information, the need to dig deeper or to try a different strategy. The need to understand that when learning is hard, you're doing important work. To understand that striving and setbacks as in any action video game or new BMX bike stunt, are essential if you are to surpass your current level of performance toward true expertise. Making mistakes and correcting them builds the bridges to advanced learning. I've never met most of my clients face to face, only phone calls and some video calls. So, my clients come from all over. While traveling, I've met a lot of entrepreneurs and business people. I've got a lot of new jobs through contacts made while traveling. I have clients all over the world and tend to pick up work everywhere I go. Even if it's not immediate, it's not uncommon for someone to reach out to me six months later and ask if I can do something. This 100%. When people ask me how to get into something I tell them to try before they take any courses. I also suggest to write down what they know about the subject already. It's surprising how much you can guess about something and be pretty accurate. The more you do this, the better you get at guessing. And neuroscience backs you up. 
you learn best by doing isn't just a platitude, attempting to apply ideas is the only meaningful test of whether you understand them and doing so literally reshapes your brain by changing the neural pathways in it. Thank you for sharing this. I'm just about to start my way on the fast lane and this motivated me a lot. Congratulations for reaching a life goal. Regards from Germany. This is a thread that has to be read thoroughly and read multiple times. So many great nuggets here. Thanks for sharing. Really inspiring stuff. I would love some expert advice on the following. I am thinking of starting a similar business that targets small law firms. Why? I recently finished my law and public relations degree and my father runs a law firm. So I'm reasonably well connected. I have built three websites on Wix. I am happy to learn advanced WordPress skills. I think I am a decent website designer. I can link the websites here, but I'm not sure if that's allowed. I think I have a lot in common with you. Similar skills, mindset and values. Also, my partner was asked to do some basic web design for a small law firm a few years ago. After reading your post, light bulbs went off. Any tips and advice? Has anyone had success targeting small law firms? Law firms is a great niche because they charge a lot of money so they can afford to spend heavy on customer acquisition. My advice is to get going a sap. Use your connections to find someone interested in generating leads with a website and use the project as a tool to learn how to do it. Find how how much they can reasonably afford to spend and offer the service with a zero fee trial period that lasts until you are producing leads. For law offices that are consumer facing and are in less than super competitive areas, it's pretty easy to get leads by following best practices in web design and SEO. Google Ads can supplement the SEO is beginning stages. With so many law offices out there spending a lot on marketing, there are tons of good examples to follow. I've even called companies in the past to ask them how they are doing so well. If you aren't competing with them, they will sometimes share their secrets. Just be straight up about your intentions. Might even have some future clients out of it. Thanks, man. Will do what do you think of the name Kelso Creative? Is available do you see any issues with the name or the net? That's a fine name. Just wanted to say, great thread. Love the hustle. The advice on being overwhelmed and just the non-quitting attitude are great to have all together. Keep it up everyone. This thread is gold. Took the time to read every post and found so many good pieces of gold nuggets. Highlighted the fact that my biggest issue is mindset plus too many options plus action faking. Need to work on that and thank you again for this amazing thread. You made me by Tony Robbins awaken the giant within. Great thread. I binged the big web design thread by and it is cool to see someone crushing it with this approach. Got some questions 1. It is not simply about web design but about delivering results, leads, sales. Would you see a better brand because you got rid of the ugly outdated website as a result? Do you also manage Facebook ads or AdWords for your customers? If content marketing makes sense, do you make a monthly plan for content creation? Do you also optimize print advertising, flyers or something? How holistic is your approach? Fox writes in his thread that he never got a lead through his website. You write that you get 50% of your customers through your website. Do you rank high for relevant keywords? What do you do differently than him? Good questions. Let me answer I have certainly ended up with a generalist agency that does everything. That means my approach is very holistic. Once I figured out how to identify what other businesses are doing, it became realistic to copy and adapt approaches to fit my clients and their markets. Rarely do I complete a project that is just a website. Almost always, there is some form of SEO, content marketing, and off website assets like Google My Business, Yelp, etc. For half my clients, I generate leads. For the other half, I build systems that generate leads. That's the value in what I do. 
there's also an element of business consulting. Just last night I was talking to a startup who is trying to launch an app this summer. They wanted to draw on my experienced background in construction and marketing. Bottom line equals I add value. If I figured out today that I could add value better by making socks, I would make socks. I follow the value rabbit. Fox's strategy is heavily focused on the salesperson. This is a great place to start because everyone is already equipped for sales even if they don't know it yet. We were all kids once convincing our parents to buy us McDonald's or a new pair of Nike Airs. My story is just different. I was learning SEO and how the Google machines work and I've always been a good writer. I dropped out of college with Fs but I always had an A in English. So, writing content makes sense for me. My content generates enough attention to bring in leads and other opportunities. Most people say that blogging is saturated and that it's too late to start a blog. Luckily for us, that's total bullshit. If you know how to use Ahrefs you can find too many blogging opportunities to list. By the time you're done taking advantage of the ones you find, one million more pop up. So yay, I do things differently than Fox, but I use his sales technique to close large sales. He was my guide at the beginning. Now I'm looking for a guide to show me how to get to the next phase which for me is building a team and a real business. Possibly niching down. Thank you for that in-depth reply. Covered all my questions. One more thing. Maybe that's a good example for your approach and interesting for others as well. Last week I started looking for websites and selling systems. Don't know how to explain that in proper English that I could improve and where I could add value. I found a local store. Very well known old store with a venue in the inner city. They have a good reputation and every time I walk by there are some people. They sell hats, gloves and luxury scarves. How would you add value and help them getting more customers or sales? Obviously I would design a nice and clean looking website showcasing their store and some testimonials, press articles about them. Optimize their Google Places listing me or Ugth is that paid advertising is a waste of money because they have no e-commerce store. And an e-commerce store is overkill and their USP is that we are an old brick and mortar store selling hats since 1920 any thought on this. Do you implement e-commerce stores as well? Shopify or Gamers? I think it's great to sell 24 or 7 online. But it's also steady maintenance work and not the make a static HTML website for an unsexy psuinous and forget approach. Thank you. Or last question I promise, any good resources or blogs or etc you would recommend? When I come across prospects I try and gauge how close they are to pulling the trigger. If they aren't close, I've learned not to spend too much time trying to push people across the line. The trick is to get exposed to people who already want to cite and know how they will benefit. They are out there, you just need to find them. Giving workshops is a great place to find clients. Talk about success stories you've contributed to and the people that can relate and want that will approach you. Then it's easy. For your old store, they probably aren't looking for any by change. They have done something that works for a long time and might be afraid to stray from the path. It's still worth talking to them though. Have you ever thought of selling online? Deleted. Wrong thread sorry. Ah damn, I only just saw this thread. This is awesome man. That was some fun times in Bali arguing over who gets the whiteboard pen and dodging earthquakes lol. I always felt like I was a year or so behind you so I'm looking forward to getting to this point ha ha. Nice. I. Dollar at hashtagging love this phrase. It makes me want to shotgun a beer then go sprinting. Hey again. Hope you could give your insight on my current issue. So at the moment I have been designing websites for people, but I want to move into other avenues that generate traffic SEO, PPC etc. My question is which one should I start to offer? I wanted to go with SEO since it's a natural progression for a website but with that it looks like it might take a lot of time to learn and get results. 
Furthermore, I have heard people say that for link building you need to do manual outreach which makes it even more time consuming and you don't even know that what you are doing will get you results. And all this time the client is paying you money for which he is not seeing any return. On the other hand, PPC is not really a natural progression because you need to create landing pages instead of a website but it is very fast and could get some results quickly. What do you think? I was thinking splitting SEO and offering just blog services or just listing services, i.e. splitting the services. So instead of doing SEO for $500 a month, I could start off by selling two blogs for $200 a month and then trying to upsell as I go. It's just that without much experience it's hard to sell results. So if I sell an apostrophe s.e.o package I am selling them first page results while with blog I am selling them just the blog with the potential of improving rankings which is less money but also less pressure. P.S. How do you do link building for your clients? Do you do manual outreach yourself to secure guest blogs? Thanks. Congrats man. How did you start selling MMRs? How did people or companies find out about your service? Can you share your site? Thank you. Each journey is different. What works for may not work for you. It's about taking action and finding your unique blend of services that are unique to you. He discovered a market need and took action. He also made the offer so convenient and irresistible for them. Read the thread, more than half of his business comes from referrals from current clients. Why not do both? Pick up SEO since it's easier to tag on as an additional offering for your website, then outsource PPC to someone else if our client wants it. I'm working in the PPC space myself and 70% of my clients come from SEO agencies who only do AdWords but not Facebook ads. In case you are worried your client may be concerned about third parties handling their accounts, it is possible to outsource PPC in a way that client will only see you handling their ads. The vendor who is doing the real work will only be seen as part of your agency. I was following your struggles from the beginning, congrats. What did you do differently to get more sales? Though I read a bunch of sales books and took some courses, it was actually getting out and talking to a ton of people that made the difference. Go figure, the way I look at everything has changed. I'm no longer afraid of rejection because I understand that most people and situations will not be a good fit for my business. Most of the time it will be because of the prospect and where they are at, and little to do with me or what I say. I just make it my goal to give as much value and learn as much as I can on each call. I'm looking for the no. I'm trying to draw it out of them as soon as possible so I can move on to the next thing. Time is of the essence. I understand that being a salesperson is a qualifying game. I'm trying to sift through the people I come into contact with to find the best win win situations. It's okay that most of them are not worth my time. That's it. It's still a challenge to get on the phone sometimes because I'm kind of an introvert, but it's rewarding because it forces me out of my comfort zone. Another thing I focus on is relationships direct and extended. I look at who knows who and strategically make the connections I think could eventually pay off. With tools like Instagram this I'd getting easier. I keep a CRM of people that might not necessarily buy from me but might be a good connection to have. Most of my leads come through referral and connections. Thanks for this amazing post. I might start doing the same thing on the side until I can quit my job. Same here. People forget it's often a long-term game. The same thing goes with repeat customers. They can come to you after one year or so. It's not always right away or the day after. Man. Totally taken in by the headline. I'm so glad I read through this. Prospecting for gold threads is a blast. I love this story. I see a lot of my own story in this and now am inspired. Hey I hope you're well my friend. Because of being inspired by your story among others in this forum, I was able to secure my first web design client and set them up on recurring maintenance. It's a great feeling. I just wanted to let you know that you impacted my life, 
and I will give as much value back to this community as I can. All the best, Andy. I think you are an awesome human being thanks so much for your original post and this thread, was very inspirational. Just got off the phone with a client and got asked a question which lead me to wonder how others would answer this client, I guess you're just going to take a template from the website and replace it with my pictures and my text. I answered with I taught myself how to code so it's custom HTML or CSS I am however using template themes from Theme Air Forest and then adding the client's info, pics and doing my best to make it SEO optimized. Is this an okay way to handle this? I don't want anyone to feel ripped off but I am indeed taking a theme and making it to suit the needs of the client. Thanks for sharing, I love your story. I hope to have one day something similar to share. I'm working towards that direction. And I'm actually in Bali, so there is something in common. Great story. Did you have a plan B? How did you know that you were going to be able to support yourself? You mentioned having 3K in your bank. Was this a current client who is paying you or was it a prospect? Either way it doesn't sound like someone who is going to be a great client and may be better without them. The truth is pretty much everyone uses templates or frameworks. Standing on the shoulder of giants you would be insane to try and reinvent the wheel with the clean code that has been perfected over years. The value that you add is on top of that by having the technical skills to put it together alongside the design, business and marketing skills to present the website as a sales tool that will not only be found by potential customers on Google but also make them convert to people who reach out for the client's service. If you haven't already I highly recommend Fox's sales course and threads on web design. Lesson number two buy is gold. Taking massive action is a vital factor for success. As Grant Cardone said. Hey Chuck great thread. I was wondering how did you find your first clients and how much did you charge? Was it through friends and family, cold calling random businesses or through networking events? The first few sites I built were for the businesses of friends and family and all for free. This gave me some real world experience and also provided a sandbox to try SEO out. The first paying project was for a non profit that my mum had a connection with. After that, it was referrals and organic leads. I can't be certain, but I would say most of my sales have been regardless of my experience, at least directly. What sells is the confidence in knowing you can get results. A lot of people aren't too concerned with the specifics of past work after it's established that you're a website designer. I really enjoyed reading this post, very well written and resonated with me, I'm just getting started after reading both MJ books, both of which were a nice much needed slap in the face. My biggest obstacle is changing the mindset and I would have never guessed. Great story, picked up a few things, thanks. Great story thanks. Update time. I want to cap this thread off as I feel like this chapter of my life has come to a close and I'm entering a new one. The next time I log progress it will be in a new thread and about a new adventure. I created this progress thread near the beginning of the year and I want to clear some things up for everyone so people who are considering the path I've been on can assess it for what it really is and not get googly eyes. The title of this thread suggests that I make 12k or more all the time. That is not the case. When I created this thread I was averaging 12k or more for 4 months. Some of those deals were to span the rest of the year so that 12k or mo is sales, not money going directly into my bank account. Getting all of that money requires fulfilling the obligations, which I mostly have done at this point. So, by the end of March, I had sold something like 47k for the year. 12k or mo was an estimate. The reason I bring this up is because my average at this point in the year is something like 8k or mo. The reason it's gone down is that in April I embarked on a three to four month trip through Asia. Despite big huge grand plans of working full time and enjoying everything, these places have to offer I spent most of my time playing and not very much time working. Why? Because I could. 
The whole time I was gone I sold about 5k in new projects and focused on completing the jobs I had. I probably averaged 15 hours of work per week the whole time. I also missed about 35 leads due to being in the wrong time zone and not paying close enough attention. In a nutshell, I just wasn't that focused on growing the business. I am disclosing all this because I don't want people to think I'm some tourist that plays all the time and makes shitloads of money. My income is directly related to how much time I put in. There are aspects of my company I get paid for no matter what, but for the most part, I have to put in the time to earn money. My aim for the future of this company is to focus on monthly retainers and less on one off contracts. Don't get me wrong, I will be doing both, but the monthly subscription model is great for keeping things steady and scaling. It not only allows my company to be more stable, but as a marketing company, we can provide better long term results if we are involved steadily over time. Marketing is an iterative process so to get serious results, you have to be doing, greater than measuring, greater than analyzing, greater than improving. On the monthly retainer side, we bring in about 3k per month now in a very automatic way that only requires a couple of hours of my time per week. I'll be going into this in more detail in my next progress thread. This steady income is the main reason why I took my foot off the gas to enjoy free time. To finish this off, here are some lessons I've learned since my last post. I run a generalist marketing agency that works with lots of different customers in various industries. It can be difficult to prioritize that which is most important when it comes to focus. That's why I've adopted the core principle behind Amazon, customer experience first. In my agency, it's always the top priority to produce a great product or service in the littlest amount of time possible while keeping communications clear and transparent so the customer always knows what's going on and what is being produced. Every single thing we do is preceded by the question, does this improve the experience our customer has in working with us? If the answer is no, it gets pushed down the list. My philosophy is that if we can be great at this, then the other things don't matter as much or at all. I don't just mean using Google Analytics or keeping track of finances. I'm talking about everything. Identifying metrics to measure all aspects of the business process is super important if you are trying to systemize everything. If you do everything the same way every time and measure the results, you can make small changes and adjustments to the systems and measure whether or not they were improvements. As my business grows and I bring in more team members, measuring becomes even more important. If I don't provide clear expectations and ways to measure results, nobody knows how well they are doing. I'm an impatient person. I want everything now. If feedback lags, I get bored and abandon objectives. This is something I'm still learning how to cope with. I've realized that I need to take a longer term perspective of my business while maintaining the ground level day to day management. It's like having two pairs of glasses for seeing close and far away. It will have been two years tomorrow since I registered my business. When I look back, I can see more progress than any other time in my life. When I look forward, I see a long ways to go. I'm figuring out that I need to settle in for the long haul if I want to be as successful as I'm capable of being. I've started to adopt principles that guide the actions of myself and my team. Principle 1 is customer experience comes first. Principle 2 is sales comes after customer experience. Prioritization is a real challenge for me personally. My brain likes to go 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 and when my list of things to do gets long, I struggle knowing what to work on first. This is where the principles come in. For example priority 1, client work and delivery of goods and services customer experience priority 2, acquiring more customers and upselling current ones sales priority 3, business administration overhead I've started to organize my tasks by these categories so even when there are 100 things on the list, I can see what tasks align with what principles in order to guide my priorities. As my team grows, this will become critical to staying on the right track. Last but not least, 
You've heard it before, the cobbler's children have no shoes. Well, as a marketing company this is an easy trap to fall into. I've slacked on my own marketing and it shows by producing an inconsistent flow of new leads. It also doesn't help sell marketing when you aren't practicing what you preach. The point is simple. Someone in the business must be focusing steadily on sales, marketing, admin, etc. All of these pieces are critical. Since I'm the main person running this business, I have to wear all of these hats and on a daily basis. I started blocking my calendar for these tasks every day. It works better like this because that way none of these things ever hit the back burner. If you take your foot off the gas in any of these areas for too long, then it takes 100x more work to catch back up, if you even can. This ties in nicely with the patience idea. Now that I am really settling in for the long haul and thinking longer term, I see how little progress in each of these areas each day will add up to huge results over time. That's there. What do you call it? Oh yay, the process. From here on out I am really putting my serious hat on. I am finished traveling for months at a time and have a home base in Spokane, Washington. I have some ideas on markets I want to go after and am implementing a plan to test them and see which one has the most potential before I sharpen my spear and catch me a whale. I'll surely be creating a thread on that soon. If you have any questions, shoot. I'm an open book. First of all great F can story man, that is the life I want to live, pack my bags and leave somewhere else, with that said I wanted to see what you would recommend me to look into buying that gives you that lifestyle, also where do I look for this business, the lifestyle I've enjoyed over the last few years is based on having few obligations and no liabilities. Nobody was relying on me for support so I could effectively disappear for a year and nobody would suffer. I also had very little debt. I actually coasted around a zero bottom line for a year. I would have liked 6k in the bank and 6k on the credit card. This happened a few times. Over time, the balance improved and I made sure to keep the debt at zero. That way, worst case scenario, I was starting at scratch. I'm kind of a hustler, so I've never not been able to put food in my belly. Another thing to note is that I didn't decide what lifestyle I wanted and then set out to get it. I had an idea, but I really just winged it. I knew more about what I didn't want than what I wanted. I also have a girlfriend who is scrappy as FCK when it comes to getting remote jobs on demand and being willing to travel. My life would have been less luxurious had she not been around since her job paid for a lot of the places we spent time at in 2018. That's the thing. She quit her job and hit the road too. One week in she decides it was boring and started looking for a remote job. One week later she was hired at remote year and we bounced to Mexico for three months so she could train. Point of mentioning that is this, there are a million ways to get what you want. The hard part is being certain that you want it. Sometimes it's easier to know what you don't want. Like me, I didn't want to be tied to any one place, I also didn't want to spend another year in the same life I had been living. That was enough to push me out the door. If you don't have any obligations and you want to travel, get your ass out the door and figure it out. If you have a fighter spirit you will figure it out. If you travel abroad, get traveler's insurance. Thank you for keeping us updated and sharing your lessons. I definitely agree with this in every area of your life. The main reason I couldn't get successful is that getting in a loop which I constantly switching between gas and brake and not working on anything consistently. It's hard to be patient and keep going when results are not coming and hold your ego when the success happens. You should always keep yourself on track because momentum is the hardest to get and very very easy to lose. 75 hard has been the best tool for getting into the loop and gaining momentum. I'm on day 67 or 75 and it's been life changing. It's become a way of life and I don't want to go back. I recommend completing this challenge for anyone who is a hard time sticking to things and thinking long term.
great thread and congrats on the progress so far. I didn't read the entire thread so forgive me if my question has already been answered. I am in a similar situation to where you started at. I'm 25 years old and have a decent life. I was thinking of the master a kill route. Turn that into freelance work, gain more freedom, etc. Did you start off with any prior web design experience? Or did you start with the courses that you mentioned? I am at the point of looking for that skill to master and to move into freelance for more freedom. Any advice for today's marketplace in terms of a great marketable skill? Long post I don't have time ATM to read it all but I read enough of certain parts to decide that I just need to jump in somewhere in something with someone in consulting type services because that is what I've been geared towards the last few years but I've been afraid I guess to just jump in get messy and risk being a complete and total failure in order to have some success. I started off with the courses I mention. I had almost zero web development skills. The HTML or CSS course that I took twice gave me the skills needed to use HTML templates. Then, over the course of about six months, I switched to WordPress using page builders which allows you to build websites with very little HTML coding and a moderate amount of CSS. What a year! I accomplished so much that it feels like three years went by. There were high highs and low lows. But what would you expect when you're winging it through learning business? First, let's talk about the results I got for my clients. All the clients that stuck with me through the entire duration of their SEO or marketing have seen great results. That's good because I don't do long-term contracts so, in order to keep the money coming in, I have to produce results. Second, let's talk about numbers. I finished the year off with about 85k in sales, about half of what my goal was, 160k. The first half of the year was boss. I had a lot of sales coming in organically and was able to close a nice amount of work. The second half of the year was very slow for me. There are a lot of reasons for this, but my main contribution was letting my foot off the gas on sales when I was abroad. The 12 hour time difference was a good excuse for not following up with anyone. Not the way to get sales. For me, 2019 could be classified as more of a working vacation. I was in denial about this until October or so when I looked back and realized I was spending a lot more time playing than working, so, I wasn't building a gigantic empire. But, I was checking things off my bucket list left and right while developing a lot of skills that are setting me up for nice progress in 2020. My only regret is that I didn't 100% embrace this vacation mindset and spent a lot of time frustrated that I wasn't making the progress I wanted. Looking back, I could have relaxed and enjoyed it more, but, lesson learned. I will work to be more honest with myself in the future. Well, I'm stationary now so my plans are changing a little bit. Since I'm not traveling, I no longer need to work remotely and my options are opened up. Lately, I've been hitting a ceiling with web design where I want to build things that I don't know how to build. I don't know any real development languages so I've been teaching myself Python or Django so I can build some web apps on a couple of my websites. After a few months of spending multiple hours a day doing this, I realized that I could probably get paid to learn this stuff. I looked online and found tons of web dev jobs in my area that actually pay pretty good. After the holidays are over I'm going to talk to a few companies and find one that will put me on a team of developers. It appears that I have all the skills necessary to fill a junior web dev role and maybe even a senior web dev once I have a little more programming chops. That's a pretty cool thought for people who are looking for a good career and have an affinity for technology. You can spend a year or two freelancing web design and marketing and end up with skills that can pay you 80k plus per year. Not bad considering you hopefully made money during those two years. A junior dev income combined with my residuals from the marketing company would be a killer way to get paid to learn a skill I want. It's not a long term plan for me to have a job, but I feel like it's the best way for me to figure out how software engineering works in the shortest amount of time possible.
It will also be nice to work with some other people for a bit. Home office life gets old, no matter what happens, I'll continue to run the marketing company on the side. I can easily match what I did in 2019 in 2020 while maintaining a separate full-time job. If anything, I will have to turn more clients down because of my limited time which will probably create a higher-end clientele. That's how it seems to work. When you are picky and choosy, you tend to land the bigger fish. That's my experience anyway. The plan for this marketing business is to get the processes down and put any new clients into longer term contracts so that in another year or two this marketing company is something I can exit for a nice profit if I want to. In the meantime, the monthly income for little time invested rocks. I'm excited for 2020 and all it will bring. I'm sure it will be fun and go by too fast. Thanks for reading and Happy New Year. Love the story Chuck. I also am a member of Fox's group. Think we have chatted once or twice. Cannot wait to see more from you in 2020. Hey thank you so much for this thread and update. Am finding myself not knowing what to do quite yet. I have read marketing books and I believe I can add value via online marketing. What are some steps I should take? Learn to code so I can build websites? If so what skills do I need to know before I learn that? I'm coming from a blue collar job. I do have a history in sales for both a retail store and family landscaping company though. Sales is where I'm a bit stronger but not so much in the technology side. What can I read or watch so I can better understand this business? Thank you. Hey one. My recommendation is to just start doing stuff. Doing is the best way to learn and there isn't anything in the online world you can't learn online, so pick an objective and set out to win. You'll surely have to study as you go and hack things together, but you'll learn so much that in a month or two you won't even believe how far you've come. These days, I don't read or take a course unless it's about a problem I'm trying to solve at this very moment. I got to this point by doing a bunch of stuff. Good luck. Okay, thank you. How would you find the website or app development clients? Any tips? That's amazing. Traveling the world while working projects and living off of passive income sounds great. Congrats. Thanks. It was really cool. I hope to do it again someday when the world calms down. Where is that update, ha? Huh? Of course no travel right now but you are making tons of progress in other areas. New progress thread coming soon. I'm also looking forward to it. Your thread has been one of the most motivating for me since I relate to you in many ways. As a noob with a few paid clients under my belt, I must say I haven't had many referrals yet so far though. Is it likely to kick off from now on or do I just have unwilling clients? I keep hearing there's this guy I'll connect you soon and stuff like that but yeah. Do they tend to pop up after months down the line? Or should I be more aggressive and call them and ask for that guy's phone number or something? Been mostly doing cold calls lately which I admit is not fun at all. I do okay though, all anxiety is gone and my average calls duration is about 3 to 4 minutes so I am able to keep them on the phone. I have an execution thread too if you wanna check it out, or some progress. I'm at 600 or 2000 of my revenue goal for this month one sale and multiple other almost sales and I want to move to my own place in July. Trying my best to make it possible. Not having to cold call and getting leads organically sounds like a dream right now lol. We'll be monitoring your account for activity. Closely. I am going over your old posts and seriously wonder how come you did not get trapped in the scam, maybe it was 2017. What scam? There are many guru cult. I'm not sure what you're getting at. I am talking about fake gurus. Don't worry if you don't get it. It was a statement. <laughs>